I'd like to do now is to go over to the key takeaways. And uh, what I'd like to do is have uh, everyone uh, take a minute, minute and a half, uh, to uh, go over some of the key uh, points that they would like to leave the audience with. And uh, in that uh, respect, I'd like to uh, go in the order that we had you do your segment. So let's start out with uh, Corey Manning. Corey, uh, can you give us some uh, uh, final thoughts for our audience? Yes. Um, the first thought on, 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 on whether to investigate is, is, as I stated in my presentation, base that on facts, base that on, on, on rather, than, rather than assurances from department managers or heads, because you're going to get a fair amount of pushback on, on, on this normally. Um, the, again, trust but verify. Scoping. Make sure that you're nimble enough to change and you're in communication with the regulator. The communication with the regulator or law enforcement authorities, I think is probably a theme that goes throughout this whole thing. Um, and, and, and I think like, like some of my colleagues you know, stated, it, this, is not, this is not showing weakness or, or, or overdoing it. Again, there's a, there's a Goldilocks aspect to this as well. You want just enough communication to, to get the credit, so to speak. Um, but also, there, there's a usefulness in that that you want to be informed as to what the law enforcement official or the regulator is looking for. The, the subpoena is going to be overly broad, and usually a written communication is going to be overly broad, and therefore not that helpful. So you want to get to the point where you're talking to the regulator and saying, what are you really looking for? And, and, and be able to, to get to the, the meat of that coconut. And then finally, developing the messaging strategy. It's really important to uh, internally develop a strategy or a script for people to answer questions that are invariably going to come up. And, and, and with respect to that internal message, we want to talk about the expectation of total cooperation. We want to talk about the company's desire to get to the bottom of this, to discover the facts, and then that the confidentiality of this, that this should not be water cooler discussion. Cooperation, comprehensiveness, and confidentiality. And thank you very much for that, Corey Manning. Helen McFarland, some uh, key takeaways from you, please. Okay, thank you. Um, I think my key takeaways were in the slides, but uh, I. I think that they um, bear repeating. The uh, confidentiality is very important, and I think it's something that everyone should uh, remember and keep in mind for for various reasons. The um, the reputation, the comp the ability to perform the investigation well, um, and also um, maintaining uh, public relations with outside parties and decreasing potential liability. But confidentiality cannot be absolute, and it is not absolute. And I think that the investigator should keep in mind the different concepts of um, how confidentiality can be limited and, and not um, promise anything re regarding confidentiality. And then with regard to uh, Upjohn warnings, Give them, make sure that they're very clear that the person who's being interviewed understands your role as the investigator, uh, that you are representing the company. Um, you know, but they should be done in, in such a way that uh, also you can facilitate um, the investigation and hopefully have enough of a, a dialogue that you can uh, speak with the witness without them being uh, completely shut down. So um, think about the script for, for your Upjohn warning uh, and, and provide it in, in a way that hopefully will be able to elicit information. It's Eric Hasso. I guess I'm next. Um, I would just say, uh, sort of following up on what Corey mentioned, is the relationship with the regulators or the, the, the prosecutors is, uh, is crucial. And it goes back to the question about you know, how can you mess this up and that's one of the most important ways in which uh, both inside and or outside counsel can um, mess up an investigation, which is uh, essentially by pissing off the, the people who are investigating from the government side. 
um, uh, you know, either just by attitude or by um, uh, being unreasonable, or worse yet, uh, giving them uh, in inaccurate or or not well researched information. Uh, I'm obviously not talking about any kind of intentional wrongdoing, but I'm talking about uh, just kind of sloppiness or, um, as as Corey alluded to, you know, taking at face value uh, the self-protective statements of executives who. Uh, may not have the company's best interests in, in mind um, and the need to dig down and find out what the facts are. Um, establishing that rapport and establishing that while you're you know, defending the company, you're also trying to um, not hinder the government and get them the facts that they need. At the end of the day, the facts are the facts. And if there's liability, there's liability. Um, and our job is to you know, limit that um, but ultimately find out what the facts are um, and uh, establish that rapport and good faith with the government. And it's a very human process at the end of the day. Uh, and um, the, 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 the prosecutors are, are just as human as everybody else, and they're uh, liable to make decisions um, sometimes based on how they react to their interactions with company counsel. Hi, this is Jonathan. So uh, just a cu couple of points here. Uh, obviously, I talked about the um, releases and making sure that your your human resources people are uh, appropriately using systems that don't restrict people's ability to be whistleblowers or to collect uh, whistleblower type penalty penalties. Uh, making sure that that language is up to date is, is very important. Um, in terms of dealing with the auditors, um, talk frequently to them. Be talk early in the process. Uh, the auditor is not going to sign off. Uh, on its audit opinion unless it believes that a, a thorough and reasonable investigation has been conducted. And so it's in your interest uh, as the company, in your interest as the lawyer um, doing the internal investigation to, to make sure that the auditor is fully informed. Um, that said, you can often provide that information uh, orally and in, in summary fashion to reduce some of the concerns and some of the risks of waiver that we've talked about. Um, the importance of the audit committee chair in, this, in dealing with internal investigations. And we've heard that in a couple of different contexts uh, in terms of who should be the sort of uh, the ultimate client of the investigation, but also here in terms of dealing with the auditor. Uh, it's important to have the audit committee chair uh, centrally involved in doing that. And then in terms of uh, dealing with the government itself, uh, think about uh, how you're going to provide information um, you know, you, you may do oral oral reports of, to, of the to the government, but think about other kinds of briefings. We talked about white papers, uh, or even bringing in people for presentations. And finally, uh, be thinking about remediation from the very beginning of the process. Make sure that you're solving the problem and that you've got sustainable, uh, well documented ways to show that remediation is uh, is taking place, because that's going to be critical to any settlement. Thanks.